Hey, it is Kirsten. And if you are going to rehab right now, tomorrow, this week, soon, or you know somebody is, please send them this video. This is for somebody who's about to um, go to rehab. I just got a question um, from a friend who said a friend of hers is about to go to rehab and she's really scared. And so um, definitely send me any questions you want me to answer in videos. And this is in response to that question. So to those of you on your way to rehab, um, fuck, <laughs> fuck, wow. Um, yes, it's scary. It is totally scary. So if you feel really scared, terrified, petrified, that's the feeling, that's, that's it, that's it. And uh, for me, when I look back in hindsight, um, I went to rehab in 2009. So that was close to almost 12 years ago. And uh, it was definitely hands down the scariest day of my life. So yes, it is scary AF, it is scary. And um, I felt like it was the, the end, <laughs> the end of my life. And I couldn't imagine what life might be like without alcohol. So um, everything you're feeling is of course normal. Um, the one thing that I wanna say to you like right out the bat is um, you're not alone. And I mean that in that um, you're not the only one who feels this way. You're not the only one who thinks that nobody understands um, what you're going through right now is actually what most of us go through. And you'll find this out once you get there and you meet your new friends in, uh, in rehab and stuff. Um, that you'll have a lot in common with, uh, at least, you know, if it's talking about drinking, like for me, it was drinking. So they drank the same way that I did. I was never really honest with my drinking before that. So, um, as scary as it feels, this is also like a big, like initiation, a big coming home, a big letting go of this. Um, what feel maybe feels like to you, like a best friend, like you've always had it there to comfort you when you were happy, when you were sad, no matter what was going on, you had alcohol there or drugs, whatever it was that you were doing. Uh, for me, it was alcohol to comfort you and get you through this hard time. So how do you possibly live without it? Like, how can you even imagine a world without alcohol, right? Like, like how, like, it's just, it's insane. And I certainly couldn't, you know, it's September 29th, 2009, when I was at the airport flying to Los Angeles from San Francisco to go to treatment, I couldn't imagine not drinking again ever. And I texted a friend who was sober and she said, um, you know, you earned your seat. She was giving me some AA lingo that I, uh, I didn't quite understand it. She said, you earned your seat. And I think she meant like, I drank enough. I drank my way into sobriety. Like I drank enough to like, um, like earn my place in Alcoholics Anonymous. But you know, nothing that she said was really comforting. Like I didn't make sense. It was all these like cliche AA slogans. And I wasn't interested in being a part of Alcoholics Anonymous. I wanted, um, I wasn't interested in giving up alcohol. You know, I just knew that it was killing me and I needed to change my life. And so um, I think the best thing that I can say to you is that it's gonna be okay. Like it is going to be okay. Um, it meaning life, right? You are going to be okay. This is actually, um, even though it feels super terrifying, um, this is the worm entering the cocoon has no idea, cannot even imagine flight, let alone wings, let alone that it might one day become a butterfly. Yet we all know worms go into cocoons and become butterflies. And that's been my experience is that when I was at the airport flying to rehab, I had no idea as that terrified worm what a, that I could potentially fly or have wings, right? That we don't know what it's going to look like on the other side of the cocoon. It's a major transformation. It's the biggest transformation I've ever been through. Um, I mean, not everybody stays sober after they go to rehab, right? But my experience is I have. I've been sober since 2009, so it worked, right? It worked. I, I got a break from my life and able to see what was going on. And so... Um, yeah, you're, it's like the new chapter. The old chapter is over. It is done. The chapter is over and you are moving into a new chapter and it's always scary. Human nature is to be scared of what's coming next, right? So of course you're scared. This is, this might be the scariest thing you ever do. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, uh, in, in, in my lifetime, it's the scariest thing I did was go to rehab because I could not imagine. Um, it was the only thing that made me feel okay in my skin, you know? And so, um, yeah, when I look back in hindsight now, I can say not only was it the scariest day, it was also the best day because it's the day that everything changed for me. It's the day that like my new life started, that I was um, reborn as a sober woman, is that I learned how to live in my skin. I learned who I am and why I'm here and what my purpose is. And so it's a, it's a radical transformation. Um, and whether you believe in uh, spirit or God or a specific God or whatever your faith may be, or if you don't have a faith, 
Um, I think it's undeniable that we all get messages that you've gotten messages before in your gut that, that there is a guidance. There is some sort of power, whatever you want to call that power that is inside of you. Um, and that power guides us throughout our life. And this is a major, major point here is that like, I want to say congratulations that you are one of the lucky ones that gets to go to rehab, that gets to go to, to, uh, has the privilege to go and get treatment. I know it doesn't feel like that. And maybe it's even annoying that I said that, but it truly is because not all of us get, get to this point. You know, there's a lot of people who don't make it to this point. So, um, it's a very, you know, it's very, it's very hard. Um, addiction is very, very hard as you know, and it's really beautiful that you're at the point where you're at that, that changing point, that turning point. And there's my dog barking. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to give you, I wanted to give you a couple of tools that I wish I had. I was just sitting here thinking about you and what would I want to know um, that would actually make sense on my way in. And so number one, like I didn't understand much about my body. I knew alcohol calmed things down, right? So I want to tell you about um, just really quickly something that maybe you already know about, but just in case somebody else who's watching this video doesn't know, I'm going to say it. Um, three breaths. Let's take them together right now. Inhale and exhale. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Take a deep inhale through your nose and a slow exhale. We'll do one more breath. Take an inhale and exhale slowly. And if your eyes were open or closed, go ahead and open them. Do you feel any different right now? I mean, maybe your nerves are so amped up from, you know, being this huge transformational worm into the cat, the cocoon kind of a day you're, you're experiencing. Um, but I, every time I take three breaths, I feel a little bit calmer after. And what I know now as a woman who's done a lot of transformation after post breaking free from the cocoon, if we're calling rehab the cocoon, right, um, is is uh, that's our nervous system, right? So we're super activated, the, the fear and the anger and all that is our sympathetic nervous system being activated. And when we breathe deep, we're literally turning on a calmer part of our space, our, our, our nervous system of our inner world, right? And so if you take those three breaths today, now, when you get on the plane, when you go into treatment, when you meet the new people, when you're scared, when you don't know what to do, just focus on your breath and those breaths will start to calm your body down. And that's an ongoing practice that we do, you know, until forever. Um, the other thing that someone taught me when I was uh, I, like maybe 10 months sober, nine or 10 months sober is because I had a lot of anxiety, right? Like alcohol was really good to cover that anxiety and to calm my nerves. And so I didn't know how to live as a really anxious person when I got sober. And so rubbing your belly. And what that does is like, go ahead, rub your belly. And what do you notice? Like when I rub my belly, I bring my attention into it just kind of automatically. And I notice that there's a heat there, there's a warmth there. I can feel the top of my jeans. And so when we're doing that, we're bringing our attention out of whatever thoughts are happening without of like the, our fear factory, right? Without of the, our mind making all those thoughts and bringing our attention into our body. And um, it's called interoception. So we're bringing our attention into our body, which actually also calms us down and is um, soothing. It feels soothing when I rub my belly. Uh, that was my dog again. So I also want to say, um, it's okay to break down. It's okay to break down. Um, uh, it might not feel good. Um, and I know, especially cause like for a while drinking can feel good, right? Um, until it doesn't, but it's okay to break down. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to grieve, you know, get like getting sober is a huge, big letting go, letting go of alcohol and, and letting go of a lot of the consequences that weren't so pleasant as well. Right. But it's okay to break down. It is okay. And you, you will be okay in the breakdown, in the breaking down, the breaking down of what wasn't working, the life that wasn't working. Um, and one of the, one of the slogans from AA that I think is really helpful, especially in the beginning is that one day at a time slogan. And you might feel resistance when I say that, but it, like, stay with me for a second. So when I say one day at a time, it's like, I couldn't imagine a life without alcohol. I couldn't imagine that I'd never drink again. I couldn't even imagine that I'd go a year. Um, I hoped I would go a little bit of time because rehab was, it's, as you know, it's quite expensive. So I was hoping I can make it through the 30 day treatment program that I was going into. 
And then I didn't want to get drunk right away afterwards, right? Because it was expensive. That'd be a waste, a really bad investment. Um, but I couldn't imagine going a year. I couldn't imagine even going the 30 days that rehab was. I hadn't gone 30 days like in a really long time. Um, and so I drank 17 years. I drank from 16 to 33. And so, um, yeah, now it's been two since 2009 since I've had a drink of alcohol. And so now I can't imagine drinking before I couldn't imagine not drinking and now I'm the opposite and I couldn't, I can't imagine ever drinking. And so that will flip that, that flips for a lot of us at some point. Right. But what helps in the meantime is just thinking like, I'm not going to drink today. or I'm not going to drink right now or right now I'm drinking my coffee. Right. And so just keeping your, your mind as much as you can in the moment, in the day, as much as you can stay present in the day and just try to bring all those thoughts about the future into the present. So instead of I can never drink again, or, um, yeah, just right now I'm right now I'm going to choose water right now. I'm going to choose to take a nap right now. I'm going to choose to journal right now. I'm going to choose to cry or crying is here. The crying is choosing me. I'm not choosing this. I'm just sad or angry or whatever, or scared. And so just trying to reel the mind back in and the breaths help bring, we, um, reel the mind back in and the rubbing of the belly. There's a lot more tricks and techniques too. So subscribe to my channel if you're resonating with this and I'll be sharing more or look through my playlist. I have plenty of other videos with other tips. I don't want to overwhelm you. So the breathing and the rubbing the belly is enough for now, unless you want to look deeper into my channel. Um, so yeah, this, uh, crying's okay. A breaking down is okay. Um, I've had many, what I would call breakdowns, bigger ones and smaller ones. And I love them. Like I don't necessarily look forward to them or want to be in them right necessarily. But, um, that's where all, every time, every time I crack, it's like more light comes in, right? Every time I crack, I get to be more me and experience more me and live my life more fully and shine more as my, my true self, my real self and align with my purpose. Like what I came here to do and realize that, you know, I am this energy inside of a body, right? Like I'm a soul inside of a body and I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission on earth. Right. And, and I didn't have that before I got sober. And so, um, I don't, uh, I don't prefer the breakdowns, but I don't mind them, you know? And I think a lot of us, I think with this year, with the pandemic, I think a lot of us or last year and this year, right? I think a lot of us have been breaking down, right? Um, and alcohol is almost like the bandit on that. And the breakdown's cool because when we break down, um, we get to like move through guilt, move through shame and start to let go of these things that have been controlling our life maybe even blindly, uh, the people pleasing, the trying to be something that we're not like caring so much about what other people think about us. You know, the number one, here's a white butterfly. That's kind of, that's kind of special. That's kind of spiritual white butterfly flying by. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the number one regret of the dying, that book, the top five regrets of the, the dying. The number one regret is, um, that they say people who are on their deathbed, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself not the other life, the life other people expected of me. And so that's one of the beautiful things that we get as um, a woman or man in sobriety is that we get to be more conscious and deliberate about our life and that we get to find the courage to um, be ourselves and to listen to our inner guidance and have and create a world from that space if that's what we choose to do, right? Um, because we're not numbing out. And so, um, so now you're going through like a death or it feels like it. It, it, it is kind of, you know, it's a death of potentially a death of the way that you've lived up until now. Um, and that you're moving into something else and that there, it really is, um, I know you probably can't imagine this right now, but it really, it really is a beautiful thing. Like, and it really is, I feel really lucky that I get to do life sober. And that probably sounds insane to you. But, um, and I never wanted it, but it's, it's the life that, uh, it's the life that knocked on me, you know, like when, what is it like Lady Gaga said about where she gets her song lyrics, when God calls, she answers, if it's four in the morning and she gets inspired to write down the lyrics, um, she gets up, turns lights on, write them down. Right. So when God calls, uh, sorry, that's a motorbike when God calls, she answers. And so when, when I'm invited to break down, I break down when I'm invited to, you know, whatever, whatever the journey is, however it all unfolds. Like when we look back in hindsight, we could see how everything was lined up perfectly for our evolution and where we were going. And so there is, there is beauty and there is some sort of, um, divine, um, like initiation in what, in this right now, in this, it, uh, and a whole lot of feelings and a whole lot of feelings. And so, um, hang in there. 
you are okay right now. Hopefully, um, I think you're going to be in good hands with where you go. And um, life, yeah, um, life I'd say now is is beyond what I, what I ever would have thought of for myself beforehand. You know, like we really get to, to find out who we truly are and live that life. Um, that's really what this initiation is, what this invitation is, what it could be. And so um, it's not easy, it's not easy. And I wanna also like end with this, reminding you that um, what you're feeling right now, it feels scary and it feels like maybe terror or fear or whatever words that you would use to describe it. Um, this is courage. What you're feeling is courage because you're doing it. You're walking into, you're walking into the change. Um, and you're, uh, for me, I'd say the most courageous thing I've ever done is go to rehab. And so this is some badass courage you have right now. This is, it might look like, you know, shaking anxiety, tears, whatever it may be, or maybe you're happy to go. I don't know. I wasn't, I was terrified. Um, but this is courage and this might be the most courageous thing you ever do. So, wow, what an inspiration you are in this moment. And I hallucinate that shortly down the line, you'll look back at the self of you today and realize that. But for right now, I just want to say, um, congratulations. <sighs> I'm so happy that you get to do life, that you get the opportunity to do life sober, that that's what you're getting. It's a huge gift. And I hope that doesn't sound annoying, but it really is. It really is. And, uh, I mean, this is the beginning. This is, this is the beginning of the next chapter and the next chapter, um, maybe like a butterfly, right? It might have the wings and the flight, the, the, the things that you can't even imagine that will come into your life as a sober woman, as a sober man. And, uh, in the meantime, just take care of yourself. If you're tired, sleep. If you're hungry, eat. If you're angry, journal and get it out, right? Like just take care of yourself and keep it really simple and just stay as much as you can in the moment, in the day. Um, and don't forget your breathing or you're rubbing your belly. And uh, send me questions, subscribe. Um, if you like this video, um, uh, like it or subscribe to my channel for more videos. Send me a message and let me know any questions you have and I'll see if I can respond with a video like I did in this, in this circumstance right here. And, uh, you know, as they say, the best is yet to come and it's not bullshit. That's totally, well, now there's ants all over me. So here we are. Um, my best life is, um, in the tropics where there's ants on me right now. <laughs> so maybe it's a good time to, to end the video, but yeah, my experience is the best was yet to come and that, uh, getting sober was, see, can you see them? They're like totally on me. I am on my doorstep and the ants have found me. Did they want my coffee? No. Okay. Now we're just getting weird. <laughs> oh, did you see the white butterfly behind me? I looked back and I saw her. Um, so yeah, so my experience really is that, uh, that getting sober was walking through that door. Let's, you know, use the environment here. Walking through that door into sobriety was, um, the hardest door I've ever walked through and it was the best door. And, uh, and I really hope that I get to be sober for the rest of my life. And I really hope that you get to be sober long enough um, to see what it feels like and to, uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm really happy for you. So, um, whoo I think this is a beautiful thing. All right, I'm gonna get up out of this pile of ants <laughs> and go on. Um, and maybe even like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I need to take a shower. Maybe there's ants in my pants. <laughs> okay, I think we're done here. Enjoy, you know, savor it. Uh, there's part of, part of being in rehab is like a relief because you get that space and that time to have help and to, and to be honest, you know, in, in a new way and to um, let yourself be seen and be heard and be around people who can see and hear you and to make these new friends who've also been through something that you've been through before. And um, yeah, it's actually, I look back with fondness. Um, I, there was, it wasn't fun. I wouldn't say it was fun, but fondness. And there's some people that I met in rehab that I'm still Facebook friends with almost 12 years later, right? Who it's like, um, this is it, you know, like getting this opportunity to do life uh, clear headed, 
clear-headed and aligned with the truth of who you are. So um, on that note, I'm getting the fuck out of the ants now because, <laughs> oh my God, they're gone. Miracles, miracles everywhere. <laughs> okay, bye.